All right, now that we've got our banding in there, uh, it's set up overnight perfectly, and uh, I used that epoxy all the way around the outside edge, and uh, it's held it in place pretty well. Um, but anyway, the next thing I want to show you is how to put the magnets inside of this uh, unit here. And the reason we built this up with this banding is so that we'd have a place to have these magnets where they're raised up high enough. I'll show you what I'm talking about here. Where they're raised, you can see in that gap how this steel right here is a certain height and you need the uh, magnets to be that same height. So this allows us to be able to do that. And uh, the magnets that I have are neodymium magnets so just a focus maybe not anyway uh, you can see about how high they are in comparison to my finger I'm not sure the exact measurement on these and I'll post that in the blog and where you can find them or on the video maybe if it'll let me and um, the way you put these in are the trick now some people like to stack them up three high I think that's getting a little bit close for the uh, for the margin that I have here to work with. The closer you get them to that steel wheel, the better off you are. It decreases the spacing in there. Um, the two up is about what I'm gonna use. Uh, and I've already gotten some in place, but what the rule of thumb on this is that you want them hitting these teeth, like no matter where the wheel turns, when it locks into place, it's always aligned with those teeth. And that's what you wanna do. Uh, the way that you put these in is uh, it can be confusing but if you think about it it's really easy north and south doesn't really matter it's more the fact that you have to do them opposite of one another that's really the thing you have to remember so um, I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about so the first thing that I did was that When you, take them, when you take the magnets apart, you see how they're stacked and they're attracted to one another. I took two off the top and two off the bottom. And then the first thing I did was this section right here. And I put them in first, here and here. And naturally, if they're attracted north, top to bottom, they're not going to be attracted side to side. So they space themselves apart naturally. Okay? The next set that you put into place, you have to put a spacer in there. The reason you have to do that is so that these don't, so they stay aligned with the stator, I guess is the, the correct term for this thing. I'm not 100% sure. So you don't want them to actually con make contact with one another. So I put a piece of uh, cardboard, just an old piece of cardboard, and cut it up, slip them in between there and you put two more in the same polarization right beside one another put another piece of cardboard and then the next two are the same poles alright so that's currently what I'm doing uh, you have to go all the way around this thing I don't have enough magnets on hand to do that unfortunately I'll have to order some more um, but uh, once I get them in there we'll see how it uh, turns out but I will I will show you once I get these in place of what kind of voltage uh, that uh, I'm getting on the multimeter here. Um, but first, I wanted to tell you on how to secure those magnets in there. They can be really tricky. You have to be real careful. If you don't, they'll stick to the inside of here. They'll stick anywhere you don't want them to be, basically. So if you have a coat hanger or some, a metal coat hanger or a, he a heavy gauge wire, you can hook the end of it and slip it in here and kind of move these rascals around if they start getting out of sorts on you and that's the best way to move them around but I can't recommend the spacers enough you really need those in there uh, make sure they're not deep enough so that they're hitting the wheel when you turn it you don't want that so uh, but then you can take either epoxy like I have over here or you can get Gorilla Glue if you don't want to do with mixing and such as that and uh, you know do them a little bit at a time you don't have to do them all in one night give them time to set up and then move around with the next group um, 
but that's how you get them in there make sure they're the same height pretty much all the way around doesn't have to be perfect but you want them aligned so that's how you get the magnets in there and then once that's done really the internal work of this thing is pretty much over with all you have to do is put put the uh, face plate back on there if it'll still fit being that I've heated it so many times you put that back on there and uh, secure it waterproof it and then we can start putting the body together and then uh, show you how to put some blades on it but for now uh, this is what I have and I'll be back in just a moment when I have the rest of the magnets that I have in my possession on here and we'll do some voltage testing okay I got what I have in here which isn't much I think I have five sets over here six over here on this side so I have quite a bit more to fill up here uh, magnets are not cheap so this is what I had and uh, I'll buy more before I move on to the next segment so you can see it completed um, and get these glued in but this is what I was talking about earlier you can just take some heavy gauge wire put a little loop there and you can move these things around um, as far as gluing these in place um, I did notice that when these repel they like to move apart a little too far so what you can do is uh, glue the ones in place uh, you can you can glue some of these in place first so they will hold so that whenever you go to put the other magnet beside of them uh, they won't move there is definitely a trick to it once you get into it you'll see what I'm talking about um, but anyway we'll move on and uh, let you see some voltage here um, not a ton but you'll see some at least from this um, I'm gonna put a glove on because uh, there's some slivers of metal there that came off on that I was beating it around yesterday trying to get that uh trying to get that casing off so I'm gonna I'm gonna spin it here with this glove on you can see it got up to about I don't know if you can see that got up about seven volts right there so hit eight that time Feel like I'm on the prices right, spinning the big wheel. <laughs> all right, I got eight and a half that time. When you get all these in place, I mean, I've I've seen my voltage get up to about you know close to 100 volts coming out of this thing. So uh, the amps are pretty low. I think it's only a one amp rating on the wire that's in here. That's essentially how it's working. It's creating an electromagnetic field that's uh, outputting these two wires here, and uh, in the end you'll hook it up to a uh, bridge rectifier you can buy those at Radio Shack I think for maybe five bucks and you just wire it up and it converts it to DC so uh, then you can hook it up to your batteries and uh, use this thing for some uh, meaningful power okay that's all I got for now and uh, stay tuned I will have uh, the rest of these magnets come in and we'll get this thing fixed up thanks for watching be sure to click subscribe to get updates directly in your inbox.